Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be going over lesson 1.1 which is the real number system. So since this is our first set of notes, you're going to need to put this um, in the title area of your interactive notebook on that right side. So the real number system is your title. Our essential question for today is how are sets of numbers classified based upon the real number system? And remember that this is going to go in the essential question portion of your notes. So make sure that you are putting that into the essential question area on your notes. So again, the essential question for today is how are sets of numbers classified based upon the real number system? And if you need to, you can pause this video at any time. So first, let's talk about natural numbers. And our question then is, what are natural numbers? So a little history behind natural numbers. The history of numbers is the story of the gradual filling in of the number line. So as you can see, we've got a number line here. And to some of you guys, you're like, oh, that's not really complete. We're missing some things. But ancient people at the beginning had no concept of the number zero. What they only needed numbers for was to count items such as cattle and they wouldn't be counting zero cattle. They would be counting how many cattle or items they currently have, which is why they only needed natural numbers. Okay, so natural numbers are numbers that you can count, which is why a lot of times when we talk about natural numbers, we refer to them as counting numbers. And if you think back to that song that we listened to in class about um, the real number system and rational numbers, Natural numbers are numbers that you can count on your hands and your feet. So I'm going to refer a lot to that song today because it's a really good song and it's catchy and it helps you remember all the different types of numbers in the real number system. So an example of this then would be that natural numbers are numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so on. Now over here we've got a little graphic organizer that you're going to fill in and that's going to go on the left side of your notes as we go through it. Okay, so natural numbers, like we said, are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And that's in the very, very center. And as we go through, we're going to fill those out because natural numbers, they are a part of the whole real number system. But they're also part of the different number systems that we find that are all within it as well. So now let's talk about whole numbers. Now the idea of zero occurred to the ancient Babylonians as well as to the Mayans of Mesoamerica. Adding zero to the natural numbers on the number line creates the set of whole numbers. Okay, so now we don't just have numbers from one and up, we now have zero and up. So basically whole numbers are counting numbers, so the ones we talked about before, but also include zero. And if you think back to our song, they say um, whole numbers are natural numbers plus zero. So that means we have the same numbers as before, except now we have zero, one, two, three, and four, and so on. Now when we fill this into our graphic organizer, it will go on the outside, so kind of um, around natural numbers, because natural numbers are whole numbers which is why it's on the very inside because one is a whole number, two is a whole number, three is a whole number, four and, and so on. They're all whole numbers. However, zero is only a whole number. It's not a natural number. So this is why the whole number goes on the outside because zero cannot be included within natural numbers. So let's keep moving on. Now the question is what are integers? Now, negative numbers have been used in China and India for more than a thousand years. They did not come into wide use in Europe until the 17th century. The whole numbers and their negative opposites form what is called integers. So as you can see here, integers are negative numbers and positive numbers and zero. So basically, integers are positive and negative whole numbers. And if you remember the song, it says integers are whole numbers plus negatives. And they look a little like this. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and so on. Now when we look here, we've got another area and that's where integers are gonna go. And we put our examples within this box. Now look at this, natural numbers, so like the number one, 
One is a natural number, and it's a whole number, and it's also an integer, which is why one can be inside of this box, because it can be all three of those. So if the number is sitting right in here, let me circle that. There's a number sitting in here. See how well I can circle it? Not very well then it means it's a natural number, a whole number, and an integer. It's every single one. However, if we've got a number like zero sitting over here, it can't be a natural number because it's not in the natural number box. And the similar idea with our integers. So negative three, negative two, and negative one, they're not whole numbers, which is why they're not within the whole number box. So they're separate from it. So there's things that they sometimes all have that are the same and sometimes they don't. All right, and what are rational numbers? What are rational numbers? Now points between the whole numbers were known to the ancient Greeks. They comprise of fractions, decimals, and mixed numbers. So as you can see, here's our whole numbers. Okay, here's some fractions and here's some decimals. And those fractions and decimals go in between the whole numbers and the integers. So rational numbers basically are numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. So rational numbers are real numbers that can be written as a simple fraction. And so remember, rational numbers are integers plus fractions. And so some examples of this could be negative three, negative one half, five eighths, 14.2, and five. And you might be asking yourself, well, how can negative three, negative three doesn't look like a fraction, but can't we write negative three as a fraction? We can. If I write negative three, okay, I can put it over one, and it's still the same as negative three, but now it's in a fraction. So every whole number, every integer can be written as a fraction. And any number that can be written as a fraction is going to be a rational number. And as you can see here, rational numbers can be all of these, um, or natural numbers can be within all of rational, num rational numbers. Whole numbers are rational numbers. Integers are rational numbers. All three of these are rational numbers. Okay, or can contain numbers that are rational numbers. But not every rational number is going to be an integer, or not every rational number might be a whole number. Not every rational number will be a natural number. For instance, is, if negative three is rational, does that mean it's a whole number? No, negative three is outside this, and it may not be a whole number. But negative three is a rational number and can also be an integer. So you just have to make sure that you understand those different types of numbers and where they fall within this graphic organizer. So last one that we're going to talk about is irrational numbers. So what are irrational numbers? And simply, irrational numbers are the opposite of rational numbers. These are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. Okay, And most of the time, these include non-repeating decimals. For example, and these are going to look really weird, but pi, 3.14, is an example of an irrational number because it goes on forever and ever. The square root of 2, if you used a calculator and you found the square root of 2, you'd see that it goes on forever and ever. And there's also numbers that are represented by letters, E and I, I being imaginary numbers. These are all irrational numbers, and they create non-repeating decimals. And the reason that irrational numbers go over here is because of the fact that they're not rational numbers, and which means they can't be any of these either. So irrational numbers are separate from rational. They're basically opposites. And now that our graph is filled in, you can see that the real number system is comprised of not only rational numbers, but also irrational numbers. So it has both in there, rational and irrational numbers. So rational numbers can consist of those integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, but irrational numbers are only numbers that cannot be written as a fraction, and they are non-repeating decimals. And so this whole system comprises the real number system. Rational numbers and irrational numbers are all part of the real number system, but 
they are not the same. Now at this point we've got some practice problems. Okay, so as you go through these, you're going to take a couple minutes and you're going to practice these problems and check. So question number one, and I would suggest putting these in your notes. Sometimes I'll have these as foldables, but I have a different foldable for us to do practice in class with. But um, in this case, we're going to go through these and you're going to check your answers. So question number one, it says negative four, true or false, negative four is a rational number integer and whole number. At this point, you're going to, I would suggest, write this down in your notes or keep track. You don't have to. And then you're going to answer the question on Edpuzzle. So pause the video and answer this question. All right, question number two. two true or false, 1.5 is only a rational number. 1.5 is only a rational number. So you'll write this down or you would answer it in your foldable and then what you will do is answer it on Edpuzzle and check your answer. Question number three. This one is a sometimes, always, or never. Whole numbers can be natural numbers. Is that sometimes true, always true, or never true? Whole numbers can be natural numbers. Question number four. Again, sometimes, always, or never true. Rational numbers contain positive and negative whole numbers. Is that sometimes, always, or never true? And lastly, question number five. Again, sometimes, always, or never true. Integers contain fractions. Integers contain fractions. So as you see, you go through these questions. You either write them down or answer them in your foldable, and then you respond to them on Edpuzzle. And then tomorrow, if you don't feel like you did really well on this, don't worry, because we'll break off into groups and you can review this with the teacher or with other students. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.